Good evening. Merry Christmas. I had to consciously think not to say good morning because you know like that is just the automatic. We are so glad that you have joined us. Uh, we see some family and friends we haven't seen for a while. Welcome. We are so glad that you uh, are celebrating Christmas with us tonight. Um, I do have just a few announcements before we get started with our service. Um, and the first announcement is actually for our online community. We're going to, we have uh, people at home who are watching online and we are so glad that they're able to be a part of us and we're inviting them to be a part of our communion service uh, tonight. So if you are online, um, either right now or right as we do communion, you'll want to grab um, some bread or a cracker or juice or some kind of substitute like that. And if you have a candle that you can light, uh, you'll be able to participate with us in our in our candlelight service uh, but we are glad that you're with us even though you're not here in the room we know that you're worshiping with us in spirit and in truth and so we are so glad that we are together and we're going to begin like we begin most of our services uh, services with a, a pressing pause and just we got everybody dressed mostly and, and we don't have to worry about dinner. That's going to take care of itself. But we're, we're here, and we want to come all here. So as the Haas family comes forward to light the candles, um, I would just invite you to press pause and to center your heart on the God that we love and the, and the Jesus that we've come to worship. As we light these candles today, we thank God for the gift of his son, Jesus. We light the first candle to remind us that Jesus is our hope. We light the second candle to remind us that Jesus brings peace. We light the third candle to remind us that Jesus comes bringing joy. We light the fourth candle to remind us that Jesus is love. We light the Christ candle to remind us that in Jesus, the light has come into the world and made it possible for our whole lives to be transformed so that we shine. Emmanuel, our God who has come to be with us, we ask that the hope, peace, joy, and love we have celebrated and practiced in Advent may be fully realized in us as we worship and serve you. We pray that your light may shine in and through us both, now and in the new year ahead. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's stand and lift our voices as well as our hearts in singing together.
joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs implore, but fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat.
tells us that Mary gave birth to his son, and she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there is no room at the inn. And what this story tells us is that even in the first days of Jesus' life, he experienced rejection. And I know that a lot of us can relate to that, and we've experienced that throughout our lives, but the great news is that it doesn't end with rejection. And if you look at the story of the manger, he was born in these humble setting. And then God sent angels and called people from the countryside and shepherds and wise men and turned it, this, this manger into a party. And they celebrated amidst the rejection. And so we're here tonight to celebrate together. And you don't have to fear rejection because God is a God of acceptance. So let's celebrate with this next song. They told me pam 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 a newborn king to see pam 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 our finest gifts we bring pam 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 to lay before our John mentioned earlier, uh, we have some people watching with us, so if you guys wouldn't mind turning around and waving to the camera, 
and welcoming our brothers and sisters from afar. And if you would take a minute and turn and welcome each other. So we've come to a time in our worship where we offer our prayers to God. So I invite you to pray with me. God of light, we come to you on this evening to gather in praise, to lift your name with our friends, with our family, and even with people we don't know. With the voices around the world, we join the heavenly chorus. Glory to God in the highest. Joy has come to earth indeed. And like Mary, we ponder all of the things that happen on this night in our hearts. We are amazed at how much you love us. Enough that you would become one of us. Become one with us. It's almost too much for us to understand. And as we think of these things and recall the story of a baby born in a manger visited by shepherds, we're reminded of your great love, a steadfast love that comes to us in our Savior Jesus, who will rescue us from sin and death. And even as we celebrate this great love, we recognize that there are many who are still waiting still waiting for the fullness of the peace on earth that we long for. There are those who wait for God's full goodness to be evident. So we remember those who long for adequate food and shelter. Those who long for peace and the end of violent conflict. Those who long for the end of grief that has a strong hold. Those who long for restoration in broken relationships, for healing from illness and injury, who are awaiting the renewing of our minds and bodies. Loving God, let us not simply remember. Give us the courage to do your work in this world and to share the peace that has come to us in the manger this evening. God, we pray especially for those who have traveled a distance to be here or who will be traveling in the coming hours or days or weeks. Give them safe travel. We pray for those who've lost loved ones and for whom the holidays are particularly difficult. Bring comfort and assurance of your presence even in the most difficult moments. God, we lift up to you those who struggle with mental illness. Heal minds and hearts, we pray. For all of those who are working today and tomorrow, those in the medical field, the police and emergency personnel, we ask for blessings on their work and for space to celebrate with friends and family. And God, for those who cannot be with those they love most on Christmas, remind them that they are not alone. Be near and make your presence known to them. In all that we do, in all that we are, fill us with your spirit. Fill us that we might wonder this evening and that the wonder of this night would allow us to share the hope 
and the peace and the joy and the love that we find in your coming to us. We pray this in the name of your son who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are going to continue our worship now with our giving of our tithes and offerings. Um, for those who are online, uh, we have our usual ways of giving. There's a, a chat in the, or there's a little button on the window. Um, you can go to our website. Uh, you can mail in your gift. Um, many of you might have seen the, the little basket on your way in. That is for offering. And uh, we're not actually going to pass a plate tonight. Uh, if you have an offering you'd like to give, you can drop that in on the way out. But we are worshiping with our offerings. And what we have come to do over the last year or so is to... Um, is to offer up through prayer what we are going to give um, God and our world um, this coming week. So uh, if you might imagine uh, what it is that you will be giving to God, whether it's money or whether it's an act of service, or maybe it's something you've done this past week, uh, those are all parts of our offering, our tithes and offering. And, and so we would invite each of you to, uh, to participate with us. And we do this in a, a simple litany. Join me if you will. Advent means coming. We wait for the coming of Jesus, who is God's gift to the world. Our gift to God is to get ready for the coming of Jesus. And one way we do this is by giving our offerings. Money isn't the only way we give to God. We also give by volunteering our time and serving others with our talents. So let's offer up our gifts to God together. Generous God, we give to you because you gave your son for us. We give because you gave us your very best, your only son. We give ourselves to you as an act of faith. We give so we can be part of your work in our world. Generous God, we reach out our hands and imagine all we are giving to you today and this week. And I invite you to, to reach out your hands and imagine what you're going to give to God or have given to God in the coming days. Generous God, receive these offerings as part of our worship. Receive these gifts from sincere and joyful hearts. Amen. Amen. God's word to us today comes from a very familiar passage, especially at Christmas time, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. And we just simply ask that as we Listen, and as we speak, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Hear these words from the book that we love. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. This first enrollment occurred when Quirinius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. Nearby shepherds were living in the fields. 
guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angel stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of, ba- assembly of heavenly forces was with the angel praising God. They said, glory to God in heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they reported what they had been told about this child. Everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. Mary committed these things to memory and considered them carefully. The shepherds returned home glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Everything happened just as they had been told. This is God's word to us today. Thanks be to God. It's Christmas Eve, so most of us are thinking about presents. Children are excited to see what's in those boxes wrapped under the tree. Parents and grandparents are hoping, maybe a little nervously, uh, that the gifts that they have purchased will bring joy to the children. And we're all sitting here tonight because we believe Christmas is, at its heart, a celebration of a gift, a gift of love. We understand that Jesus is God's gift to us. We read this in many passages in the Bible. Here are a couple you might be familiar with. Paul writes, If God is for us, who can be against us? He didn't spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. Won't he also freely give us all things with him? And in the Gospel of John, we read this very familiar verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. We understand that God, that Jesus is God's gift to us. Jesus came that we might have forgiveness of sin, a new beginning, and hope for eternity. And all I want us to do tonight is to meditate on this gift. Ask ourselves, what kind of gift Jesus is. For, for God so loved the world that he gave. But what is this gift like? When God gave his son, what kind of gift was God giving us? Now, I imagine there's a few of you out there who are just thinking, a gift. A gift is a gift is a gift. And, and I'm going to tell you that that's not true. Not all gifts are the same. For instance, I received this gift last year. (laughs) This is the original toilet coffee mug. And it tells me that I can go ahead and drink from the bowl. (laughs) I I got this last year from a friend. She did not expect me to use it. it. It is the kind of perfect gift that you save even with the box. Not because someday it's going to be valuable, but because someday you'll have a white elephant gift exchange and you can pass it off to the next person, right? It's perfect. I just keep waiting. I keep waiting. Maybe one, one, uh, one year in the future we'll have an office white elephant gift and maybe this will show up. Uh, this was a gift. She gave it to me. But Jesus isn't anything like that kind of gag gift, is he? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. When God gave his son, what kind of gift was God giving us? 
Let me give you another example, another kind of gift. This Advent season, we've been bringing gifts for the Long, Longfellow Holiday Shop. And this past week, the Longfellow students, elementary students, were able to choose gifts to give away. Here's a, here's a photo of their shop full of gifts. Um, the idea is that the kids get to go into this shop and choose a free gift that they get to give away to a parent, to a loved one, to a grandparent. Uh, they are able to experience the joy of giving. Uh, one, a joy that they might not normally be able to, to experience. Uh, on Wednesday, I went to Longfellow and I got to wrap presents with first graders. I, I got to wrap presents for first graders. Uh, Joshua was one of the little boys that I, I helped. Joshua had picked out a gift for his dog and his mom. It's the same gift. Uh, it was a little pancake making set along with an extra box of pancake mix. The pancakes end up in the shape of a little dog. Now, I'm guessing that that's why Joshua picked this out for his dog, right? Um, and of course, I know why Joshua was giving it to his mom. His mom is the one who makes pancakes. In fact, she loves making pancakes for Joshua. And I'm sure that she would love to make doggy-shaped pancakes for Joshua this year. Joshua is giving his mom and his dog a gift. But really, Joshua was the one who was going to benefit from this gift, wasn't he? He was the one who was going to enjoy the pancakes. Uh, Joshua's mom was going to have the joy of making her son pancakes. And having made pancakes, I can't imagine that that's an easy way to make pancakes. It's more work, not less. But wasn't that sweet of him? I wonder how many people think that God's gift works this way. Not on a much larger scale, of course. I wonder how many people believe that, that God gives his son to humanity, but the real motive behind God's gift is that God wants humanity to do something for him, to serve him and praise him. God seems gracious, but God's gift actually takes more than it gives. This is completely wrong, of course. God doesn't send his son because he needs us or needs our service. God created entire galaxies simply by speaking them into existence, filled our world with beauty and goodness and life simply by saying, let there be. God doesn't need us or whatever offerings of service or money we might give. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. When God gave his son, what kind of gift was God giving? I think a lot of people understand the gift of Jesus like the kind of gift you would receive as an inheritance. Do you know how an inheritance works? Someone designates that when they die then this person will receive this thing as a gift, and that person will receive that thing, and the other person will receive this other thing. And uh, the gift could be anything, really. Uh, the gift might be a house, or a car, or money, or a pet, or a family heirloom. The gift, the inheritance, is designated when a legal document, called a will, is designated drawn up with a lawyer. And it's a done deal as soon as the will is signed. Of course, the person, as long as they're still living, can change their will, can alter the gifts of their will. But the people who are going to receive this inheritance don't actually get the gifts until after there's a death. They don't get them right away. They have to wait. A death has to occur before anyone receives an inheritance. Now, my analogy is not exactly the same, but a, a lot of Christians believe that their faith in Jesus works in this way. If they will do their legal work right now, and for some that might be being baptized, and for others it might be praying a sinner's prayer, once the legal work is done, 
God has promised that when they die, they will receive an inheritance, the gift of eternal life. They really don't need to do much between now and their death. It's a done deal. It's legal. It's binding. They've put their faith in Jesus. And therefore, a future in heaven is waiting for them. Now, of course, living a life of faith, a faith in Jesus does mean we experience eternal life with God in eternity. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This is true. This is the good news. But it's not the whole truth. It's not the complete truth. It's not the most that we can say about this gift that we have been given as we put our faith in Jesus. Uh, let's use the same analogy, but change the details a little bit. Um, let's say that there's a young woman who is the granddaughter of a business owner, a really successful business owner. Uh, this grandfather, as he's making out his will, divides his property and his assets between his children. But he wants to leave his business to his daughter. He writes it in his will. Now, uh, usually, often, people know what's being left to them, and, and the granddaughter might say to herself, you know, I don't really want to run my grandfather's business, not his kind of business. I actually have my own ideas about the kind of business I would like to be in. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that, and then someday, when my grandfather eventually dies, I can sell his company, and I'll have even more resources for my own business. And that's not a bad plan. There's nothing wrong with that, right? But it's probably not what the grandfather had in mind. I'm guessing that the grandfather wants the granddaughter to work with him at his company. Right now, while he's living, he wants to share his knowledge with her. He wants to show her the ins and outs of business. He wants to teach her how to treat employees uh, right and to bring out the best in them. Uh, he wants his daughter's input as to how to move forward in the future. He wants to empower her, give her power to, to run the company. And most of all, he wants the joy of working alongside her. And I can imagine that he has thought about how he would work with his, this granddaughter on a day-to-day -day basis. Sometimes working over the lunch hour late with her or into the evening. He's looking forward to getting to know her over the years and for her to get to know him. It, he's looking forward to the relationship that they're going to develop as they run the business together. You see, for the grandfather, the, the gift is not just handing over the business, but building the business together. The gift isn't the value of the company, but the value of working with family. The gift isn't the legalities of ownership, but of the deep ties of respect and loyalty and love. That's why the grandfather is giving this gift this inheritance. And that's exactly why God gave Jesus. It wasn't just a mission where we as lost and broken humanity could be rescued from sin and guilt and death, though that certainly is good news and part of our good news. No, God sent his son for more than just this. God sent his son Jesus so that we could be adopted into his family and begin to learn the family business. Right here, right now. So we could begin to show the world the goodness of our Father, His power and His joy, His love, His blessings, His peace. The gift we receive in Jesus is not something we have to wait for, to wait until death to experience. We are given tastes 
of the power and the privilege and the possibilities of being God's children right now. I, I love this passage from 1 John chapter 3, where he writes, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Not will be, but are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now you are children of God, and what we will be has not, been, has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Something beautiful and good and completely amazing is going to happen when we experience death in Christ and find ourselves face to face with Jesus. Some kind of transformation is going to take place in an instant. And as I was writing these words, I could not help but think about Jay Packadeer and Ernie Mizey and Joan Daney and Verna Hoopman and Sharon St. Charles and all the others that we have lost, whether recently or in the past. Can you imagine the life they are experiencing now? They have more life than they've ever had. They have more life than we have ever had, even at our best. But again, that beauty, that goodness, that love, that joy, that power, that peace is not a gift for tomorrow, not a gift we wait for. We begin to receive it right now. We, we get in on doing it right now by doing what we'll do then, seeing Jesus face to face. We put our eyes on Jesus we look at him and watch him closely. We imitate him. Paul has this beautiful image of this in uh, 2 Corinthians. He writes, And we all, who with unveiled faces, uh, we might say, with eyes of faith, we all who with unveiled faces contemplate gaze on the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Did you note that that's not in the future? That's not we will be, that's we are being transformed. We are already being transformed in the image of Jesus. As we look to him and look at him, that transformation is already happening in us. We already have a role to play in the family business right now. E even now, we enjoy life with God and with His Son. Even as we learn how to live with God by His Son. But one early church father was even so bold as to say it this way. For the Son of Man became, for the Son of God became man, so that we might become God. The Son of God became man, so that we might become God. This is the gift we celebrate at Christmas. This is the life, not only the life we look forward to, but are invited to begin experiencing here and now. And of course, I haven't even exhausted the gift. We're really just getting started. Because I'd have to say something about the Holy Spirit who has given, given to us as the down payment of our inheritance, who empowers us with gifts and fills us with his fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. That's for another sermon. Tonight, I'm simply inviting you to celebrate the gift of Jesus. To gaze at him and look full in his face. To take him in. 
I would invite you right now to just take a moment and tell Jesus that you want to see him more clearly. Whatever that means for you, that you want to see him more clearly, that you want to be with him, and that you want to become more like him. Take a moment. Say what you need to say to Jesus right now. Beloved in the Lord, we come to this table to experience Jesus, to be with Jesus. We come as we always come, in remembrance, in communion, and in hope. Remembering that Jesus' gift is a done deal, it's a sure thing, it happened in the past. He lived for us and loved us and gave his life for us, so that we could be reconciled to God. But that gift doesn't belong in the past. It's part of our present. Jesus continues to give himself to us by his spirit, continues to invite us to follow him into his love, into his joy, into his peace, to do his good works here. And to continue to do them until the gift is finally and fully realized. It's what we hope for, right? Eternal life. Not just life forever, but an eternal quality of life that cannot be diminished. That will, in fact, only grow. We come to this table remembering that Jesus is the gift who has given, who is giving, and will continue to give into eternity. For those of you who are watching online, uh, if you don't have your bread and juice, this would be a good time to get that, a candle too. Uh, For the rest of you, some some housekeeping. Um, After we've prayed and uh, the elders have come forward, we'll invite you to come out the center and come down And we'll have an elder, two elders at each side. And and we do communion by intinction here. Um, We used to call it rip and dip, but we no longer rip. The piece is already cut for you. But uh, the first elder will, Jill just thinks this is funny that I would take this sacred moment. And and I love it that she's laughing because this is a family moment. This is family time. This is time with our father. So as you come, there will be an elder here with a, a plate who has, that has pieces of bread. You'll take one and, and uh, look at that elder when they say, the body of Christ given for you. Uh, if you are gluten-free, there's an option right here on the table. Just grab it. Um, and then you'll step to the next elder who will have the cup. And you can dip the, the bread into the cup. Or you can take um, an individual cup of juice here, uh, whichever you feel comfortable with. As you, uh, as you go out and around back to your, your, tab- to your pews, uh, there are candles at each end of the pews here. Uh, some of them are the special electric kind, battery-powered kind for parents who need those, and others are the real thing, and we'll, we'll have our candle lighting as soon as we are done with communion. I don't think I've forgotten anything, but yeah, good. Uh, This is a time we get to spend with Jesus. This is a time we get to spend with our big brother, with our father. Let's talk to them for just a moment and tell them how grateful we are to spend this time with them. Gracious God, you have given us so much everything we have that is good, the breath in our lungs, the bodies that we have, the homes, 
the cars, the jobs, the families, everything that is good comes from you. And you have in mind for us and for our future only good. We see this most, most clearly in the gift you gave when you sent your son into this world to be born to, like one of us, a baby. Because of this child, this son of yours, who lived the perfect life and died an unjust death, breaking the power of sin and death. We have hope for life with you, now and in the future. And this time that we'll spend tonight is just time with the family. And we want you to feed us. We want to look more like Jesus, have a deeper faith in Jesus, know the experience of grace of Jesus in, in a more real way because we are here. Lord, we ask that your spirit would be at work right now so that these, these loaves would become for us the body of Christ and this juice would become for us the blood of Christ so that we would become closer, more united to Jesus. That's our desire, to look on him, to take him in deeply so that we can live like him. Lord, let this meal strengthen us spiritually so that we can do the work, the family business, you have called us to do. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to invite the elders to come forward at this time. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And, he, and after he had given thanks and blessed it, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after he had eaten, after they had eaten, he took the cup of blessing. And he poured it out and he gave it to them, saying, this cup represents the new covenant, the new agreement that we will have together with God that's ratified by my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The bread which we break and the cup which we bless, they become for us Something of Jesus. He is with us here and now, giving his life to us right now, even as he gave it to us 2,000 years ago. Come, for now all things are ready.
Let's pray and thank God for his gift. Gracious God, you are a giver, generous beyond measure, gracious, compassionate, slow to anger, loving, 
full of joy. Prince of Peace. We are so thankful to be a part of your family. To be invited into a faith that has such hope. It has such power. We ask that as we live our lives through the rest of this year and into the next, that you would capture us with your love. That you would show us how beloved we are, how adored as your children. And that you would send us to share that goodness and that grace with others. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as we light our candles together, just a reminder that once you have your candle lit, it stays upright. So to light your candle, you'll, you'll tip it to the person next to you and then bring it down. Beautiful. Jane wants me to demonstrate. Like this. worship the Lord. Why don't you stand?
first verse together one more time. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Come, yon virgin, mother and her child, holy infant so tender and white. My prayer for you is that you experience a silent, holy night. One that's full of laughter and joy and conversation and love. Most of all, my prayer for you this Christmas is that you will see Jesus more clearly. Because when we see Jesus more clearly, the world sees him more clearly. So go and know that the Lord blesses you and keeps you. The Lord turns his face toward you and is gracious toward you. The Lord lift up his countenance toward you and give you his peace. Merry Christmas, everyone. Praise God from... You're wondering what to do with your candle. Um, there are baskets as you leave the sanctuary. Just be sure to blow out the candle before you put them in there. Merry Christmas, everyone.